Today we have our special guest, Ahmed Bin Sulayan, who is here already with us. Let me give you a, a quick introduction for those who were not uh, on last Tuesday together with us. Ahmed, he is chairman of the MCC, Dubai Mood Commodity Century. He's also chair of the Dubai Diamond Exchange, and he was for, uh, former uh, United Emirates Kimberly Process Chair 2016. So, ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Ahmed Bin Sulayan. How are you, Ahmed? Doing great. Thank you. Thank you for the second introduction and three days. Um, I'm glad we managed to deal with the technical issues here. Um, I guess, uh, I don't know whether it's pressure on the internet from the UAE. We, I recall about 10 years ago or so, they, uh, there was a study on uh, which uh, community in the Gulf uses social media the most. And UAE was by far by far the most uh, that use Twitter and Facebook and all that. So it's no surprise during the pandemic, there's a bit of pressure, but we did find a way around it. Uh, and I did mention, I think in that talk, I think I managed to squeeze out that we are working with the Etisalat to roll out the 5G technology for our, for our free zone and community. And uh, we did have a chat with Du and Salat and we found a way around it, but hopefully uh, no one else faces these issues when they go for live stream interviews and all that. Anyways, it's good to be connected with you. Uh, it makes me Glad feel that I'm you. close close to you like the last time I was in Sao Paulo. Yes, yes, Sao Paulo. Yeah. But, well, for those who don't, don't know, Ahmed travels a lot and he visited Latin America many, many times, including Brazil, Venezuela, Colombia, Panama. And we were <laughs> going to talk a little bit about his experience in Latin America. But before, before we go to this part, Ahmed, I would like to ask you, uh, what you did as a leader, and of course your team, did uh, the first step uh, to, uh, together with your members when you hear about the COVID-19, all the situation, all this challenge, what were the, your first steps? Well, we, we're not all yes men to each other. We all have different opinions. Mm -hmm. And uh, really this year, I wanted to only focus on the mobile conference in Barcelona and the Made for Trade live show uh, in uh, Cape Town and Joburg. But I could not miss out the opportunity. I believe it was in February or maybe late January. Uh, I ended up going to Davos. And I don't like going to Davos. I feel it's too flashy, it's for show and all that. You Personal think so? opinion. I, I feel, I feel like it's, it's too many people with private jets and all this and talking about how they make the world better and you see all this money being spent. So personally, it does affect me the wrong way. But I could not say no because DMCC signed an, uh, a contract with uh, Crypto Valley to roll out blockchain and crypto uh, technology and ecosystem to the community and free zone. And really that's to bring in more business, more trade and plug in more businesses with, that are linked to that uh, type of technology. So I couldn't ignore that opportunity. It turns out that was one of, one of the biggest stories or maybe the big, biggest story over there. That was a good one. But before Africa, I had also a roadshow for the future of trade roadshow in San Francisco and Houston, which I didn't want to go because it was too far from South Africa. I wanted to mm -hmm. conserve my energy. To my luck, I did go because I don't want to miss the opportunity. And we had a good discussion with some of the businesses in Silicon Valley and others. And we talked about China and how China is struggling and how this could be a pandemic. It wasn't a pandemic yet, but the, everyone knew at that table that China is going to come back. Business will be back as normal, but it will, things will change. There will be more focus on local production. There will be focus on uh, how things are packaged. I mean, just like the car industry, people did not need to wear seat belts. Today, not only people have to wear seat belts, the past few years, even the ones who are sitting in the back seat have to wear seat belts. You know, you adapt, it becomes a habit. Um, I went to Houston, finished my meetings over there, met with some oil and gas companies, and we had another Future of Trade event over there, but you could see that the city is becoming quiet. Um, and around that time, the pandemic kicked in. So I'm very grateful and uh, I felt lucky that I didn't skip Davos. I didn't skip uh, San Francisco and Houston because it would have killed me if I s saved my energy for South Africa only to see the president of South Africa say, we're in a state of emergency um, we, uh, and disaster, we're locking down. My team told me, 
things are being locked down. I didn't believe it. I actually said, when South Africa locks down, that's when I'll come back. Uh, it, it took me a while to get back to Dubai, but I'm happy that I'm here. Um, talking about businesses and decisions that has happened in the past few months. April, I think we, we registered around 83 or 84 companies. We broke that number for May. We had around 500 plus companies that renewed their licenses in, in April and over that number as well in May. I don't have the exact numbers, but uh, a lot of things that the UAE has done to make sure that the community is safe and secure is actually a positive uh, thing for companies to come and uh, set up in DMCC. Um, what uh, what so we what, what we focused what we fo fast that you guys realized that something was going on. Some some well, action should be done fast. Two right? two two things that kept DMCC alive and 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 still moving is that we're very strong on the digital market. Um, most of the businesses uh, that. Uh, most of the businesses and, and, and business approaches digital companies do set up online. You could actually set up your company about 99%, uh, almost 100% online. We just need a witness to see the shareholders set up the company and MOU. So you can go to your dad. <laughs> Habibi. One of the kids here just came by. Uh, so uh, one second, I need to call sure. her father. Sure. One second. Let me do this. I laugh uh, on TV when I see others, but uh, it's not my kid. Let me see. Oh my God. Uh... Hello? She wants to be on the camera. All right. Sure. <laughs> uh, uh... She wants to give her opinion. <laughs> Well, to everybody who is getting here, Anyways, welcome everybody. We are speaking with Ahmed well, Bin Sulayan. Please, Ahmed, go on. Anyways, wh where was I? Where was I again? You were talking I about, distracted. because I asked you how fast uh, took you yeah, so, to so, and so, so two things, two things that, uh, that um, you know, kept us busy, I guess, and active, because this is what, what was the scary thing about it. When when COVID-19 uh, kicked in and you had the lockdowns, you had the airports shut down, you had strong, solid businesses that just froze. So yeah. one of the biggest losses, maybe the biggest losses in uh, Warren Buffett's history was in the airline industry. He regretted oh, yeah. putting his money in the U.S. airline industry. He didn't blame Donald Trump. He didn't blame China. He just said, I made the mistake. And, you know, that's the character of a leader who accepts and, and says it. So, so yes. I really respect that. Um, but for DMCC, we, we have over 17,000 businesses. That, these businesses are not going to disappear overnight. And because we're strong digitally and even on the marketing level, that is important. Um, I pushed my team and I've, I've worked with like at least six different marketing teams in the last 19 years. I've worked for the Dubai Multi Commodity Center. So, and I've always pushed digital marketing for many reasons. A lot of times I feel the local press, the regional press never really gave us the fair uh, the coverage. There's a lot of games here and there. And I didn't care about having a relationship with the editors. I have a good relationship with them, but not to the point where I work for them or they work for me. It has to be mutual respect, it has to be win-win. But when the social media aspect came into it, I jumped on that because I didn't like, uh, I did not like them being the gateway. I, I like more control on that. So what you see my team does is they monitor the movements on our social media handles, whether it's Instagram, Twitter, um, Facebook, and then for China, we, we, uh, Weibo, and uh, I forget the other one. I forget the other one. There's two that we use. There's, there's a, there's, they have the WeChat and Weibo. Um, so we left nothing to chance, and that was years ago. People who came and visited our office and saw these type of uh, tools that we use felt that maybe we're, we're reaching too much in the future. As soon as the pandemic kicked in, this is what saved us. You have, and, and, and the businesses jumped on that as well. They, they connected with us and our number one priority wasn't about bringing in new businesses. It was about maintaining what we've already achieved. Very smart. Very smart. And, and the, webinars, the webinars helped a lot. It gave opportunities for potential members and current members to ask questions and for us to understand where things are at. I'm telling you right now, you can't depend on the traditional media. They are lost. Absolutely. They, they are barely working. I, and 
especially in the U.S. You know, you have a few states doing the right things, other states, it's, it's difficult. And, 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 you know, as much as people can criticize the U.S., it's difficult. I think the U.S. is just as big as Europe or maybe half the size, whatever. It's not easy to maintain. So uh, it's going to be challenging. Other countries can control the population, can't control the business, but you can't do much in the U.S. And, and it's very interesting how they're going to overcome that. Even when there is a vaccine, it's going to take a while. There's no guarantee the vaccine would work uh, exactly. the same way uh, that, that people can envisage. Um, but, but I'm very proud of how the UAE is, has handled things. When I got back, I had to be in quarantine. They had to take, they, nobody was given a pass. Nobody is uh, above the police, above, above the law. So you, I'm not going to name countries because I have to be politically correct here, but some, some leaders didn't care. They did not wear the mask. They pretended nothing is happening. And then you see the spike. Uh, you know, you got Sweden. They tried and they're, and they're trying to control it. And I respect that. Like it's, it's, it's a difficult challenge. You, you, if you kill the economy, it creates a bigger problem. Exactly. But also, if nobody, and if nobody's alive, what the hell is it, the economy is going to be exactly. doing? So exactly. it's, 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 it's a very difficult thing. And, and, the, and this is the, these are the times where you see the true re- leadership. But more important than that, you see true uh, humanity in some of the leaders. So that's what we're looking for. And in the UAE, we've, we're, we're blessed to have that. You see a lot of focus on expanding the, uh, building more hospitals, more beds. And, and looking for a, a better solution while also assisting countries that are in need. So there's a lot of, uh, a lot of uh, moves that I've seen that, that, that I take pride in. Ahmed, um, t- uh, bringing ch- now to the, to, to the jewelry shows, because um, mm-hmm. I was talking with the, the previous guests in, in the business talks, and he, they have a very similar uh, opinion than you, than the traditional way, the traditional model, it's, it's killing before the COVID and now is going to be, I'm not saying that it will disappear because it never disappear, but you have to change, you have to adapt, you have to renew mm-hmm. yourself, your, your mentality. Um, we, we saw the uh, Basel, the, they, they will change the name, they will change the date. Uh, Las Vegas, they cancel, postpone today, mm. Oro Arezzo postpone to 2021. How is mm-hmm. going to be the, the show in Dubai, the jewelry show in Dubai? Well, look, uh, as you know, I work on a number of commodities in DMCC. And if you look at my shirt, I'm wearing the coffee ah, center shirt coffee here. Center. Mm-hmm. Uh, I'm focusing on that. And uh, the difference I see with our coffee initiative as opposed to gold, diamonds and tea is that we're not, I don't feel comfortable to say we set it in motion. There are a few aspects that I want to make sure uh, are, are sorted out for me to feel comfortable. I don't think you can create an industry in two, three months and just say we're there. Um, and even if there is no challenges, I get worried. I need to find where the issues are. Um, but coming back to the jewelry, we were supposed to have uh, the Sibjo conference. Um, I, I enjoyed the one in Bahrain last year and we're hoping October, November, but it isn't about the UAE being ready to host the Sibjo conference in those dates. It's more about the other countries, if they open up or not. And we want to have a very successful Sibjo conference. I would rather have that uh, done next year properly than r- try to rush it right now. Um, I was also in Rio, uh, I believe last year or something. And, uh, and uh, the, the Pulses uh, conference in Rio was happening at the same time as the Global uh, Chamber of Commerce uh, event, at the same road event. Yeah. Um, we, saw, we secured hosting it for March. Obviously, that's been uh, rescheduled. We will host that. I mean, the CISA's Eptics, uh, Eptic uh, base for the Pulse Association is in Al Mas Tower. Coming back to, to our jewelry events, we have to do what our members are expecting. Like, you see some changes that might have been in the plans before, or may not have been. So if you look at the news today, the, the, the biggest news today is that the beers are looking to move out of Gabaron, Botswana. Yeah. They're looking at Belgium and they're, they will likely look at Dubai. And I don't think in the decision making there will, there will be any politics being played here. Um, there were reasons why they moved out of uh, Antwerp and there are reasons they were in Antwerp. It's closer to London. The, the beers office was there and we are going to make sure that they, they know what, uh, what advantages 
uh, they would have if they're in Almas Tower. Obviously, being closer to Russia, being closer to India, the market is there. It's not the same Almas Tower from four or five years. You know, we have over a thousand members in the Diamond Exchange. The tenders, you know, are being pushed a little bit, but it's very active. It's, it's there to stay. Um, coming back on... Um, what was I talking about? On the Sergio event. What do you, what do you think yeah. then the, uh, the trade show, the, sorry, the jewelry shows will be more digital from now on or they will have to no, be more No, what, no, what I, think, I, th I think people will still have to uh, go there personally and see the jewelry. Like there's so much you can trust your iPhone or your MacBook with. Um, you can't swipe left and right just to pick what you like and all that, especially when you're paying big, big bucks on it. Yeah. But... Uh, I'll tell you what's going to change. We, we've always heard about automated diamond cutting. But then again, it's a challenge because there will be jobs being lost. Today, due to the COVID pandemic and the idea and the perception that there might be other pandemics and other ch challenges, given that the world is more uh, connected than before, uh, the idea of having an automated uh, printing facility, uh, and, 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 uh, and, and, and that is, is becoming more attractive. There's less concern of pushback from unions and et cetera. Now for Dubai and the UAE, we don't have that issue. We compete. Can you hear me? We can yes, can yes. compete with India and China. Um, uh, so for Dubai, we can start that any time. I mean, when I was in San Francisco, I visited the Diamond Foundry. That was very taboo when I was the KP chair. Mm -hmm. I, I was actually approached by one of the partners of the of the event. I didn't know of, of the foundry, and they said we want to talk about, it. we want to build, a, we want to bring our uh, lab-grown diamond facility to Al Tower. I begged the person not to mention to anyone that he spoke to me about this. I do not want okay. to leave lose one of my few one of. The, I should have put it on uh, airplane mode. So uh, th these, uh, these, these types of businesses that brings AI, digital, and less, uh, uh, less workforce into the facility will be a little bit attractive, or should I say the excuses will be there. Now, whether the business wants to save money or wants to keep it uh, more, uh, uh, wants to lower the risk of having diseases spread, that's another matter. Uh, what this disease uh, uh, um, indicates to the world is that it doesn't care who, how rich you are, how poor you are, what religion you are, it needs to be dealt with. And social distancing, as, as, Van, uh, as Van Jones uh, used, uh, said in his uh, Instagram, social distancing has been happening for a long time. Gated yeah. community, that's social distancing. A big mansion with a few people living there, that's social distancing. But this disease affects everyone. So if it affects the uh, the uh, immigrant of color, let's say, and they don't get the right healthcare treatment, then that person can't treat your grandparent or someone else in your family. So everyone gets affected. It needs to be dealt with on a global level. We're oh, all in this together. And when, when we say we're all in this together, I mean everyone. Doesn't everyone, matter what flag such. you represent. We so unless, unless it's dealt that way, we will still be uh, working in, in these circumstances. Absolutely, absolutely. Somebody asked you here uh, about the Expo to, uh, to uh, 20. Yes. It would be this year, right? I think it postponed no, it's, the next year, they, right? They, they, what, what happened was the, we've, uh, the Dubai government and the UAE government proposed to the Expo committee to postpone it, and the committee had to accept. Now, it's convenient for a number of countries. A few countries were not ready. One of the last yeah. countries to start finishing or start constructing their uh, pavilion was the U.S., amongst others. So it gives time to actually have a proper expo. It's kind of a relief a little bit, and there's no finger pointing whether Dubai was a bit late or, or things were mismanaged. We have a lot of time. And, and also, it, more important than the physical uh, setup of the expo, the ideas, the discussions. It's going to talk about more on the health side, avoiding crises like this, um, I mean, it talks about connecting minds. It's going to cover the pandemic. It's going to cover other opportunities. And in times of crisis comes opportunities. Uh, 
I took a risk uh, by pushing my team and especially the marketing team who, who I cannot thank enough for pulling off uh, a coup, I guess, of, of, of a display on the Burj Khalifa. We displayed the UAE gold bullion coin, both of them, the first and second uh, UAE gold bullion coins, which are actually around 10 years old. But the message was, yes, things are tough, but you need to know where to go, where to put your money. There are others who have the cash, but they don't want to put it anywhere where they might lose. But in these times, gold is, is king, I guess. Yeah. You know, as they say, cash is king. I think gold is king. Yes. Why gold coins as opposed to gold bars? It's difficult to sell gold bars. Not everyone is going to be able to afford it. But you have gold coins, you can spread, break it, or have the same amount. I mean, it's more flexible. And why not? Uh, have the, the banks in the UAE and the region pick a GCC uh, product like the United Arab uh, Gold Bullion Coin. Um, my uh, 10 years ago, my challenge was in launching these gold bullion coins was to find a monument that says the United Arab Emirates. So I took, I took the opportunity to patent the idea when Burj Dubai during the launch changed its name to Burj Khalifa. I'm like, you're the tallest tower in the world, named after our president, that's it, the door is open. And until today, there's no monument that can beat that in the UAE or even the GCC, if you ask me. Yes, uh, just uh, I agree with you when, when you say about, uh, we have to rethink, we have to see, we have to be connected. We cannot, mm -hmm. it's not about that we be in our box. Before mm -hmm. we could give this excuse, which was, in my opinion, a terrible excuse, even before. But now we have to connect, we have to work together, and we have to understand that if things are well in Dubai, wonderful, but cannot be only in Dubai, must be well in Brazil, must be well in USA, yes. because we are connected. So this COVID-19 is not only about one country or two countries, mm -hmm. it's about the world. So if mm -hmm. things are not well in America, affect all of us. So yes. I, I, I think some people still think that only they take care of their own countries or their own regions will be enough. And it's different now. It's other game. It's, it's like we, we have to press the start again and start the world again. I, I, mm -hmm. I, this includes for business too. So people are saying here, Ahmed, that they want to be in your team. So people... <laughs> uh, look, we... we... <laughs> We're, we're going to overcome this challenge. And uh, at first, when I, when I first realized that airports are shutting down, there was fear. I'm not, I mean, I'm, I'm taking a leadership role, but, but I'm like anybody else. I have my, my own concerns. I, I have to challenge some of my thoughts, etc. cetera. And uh, by the second, third day, I realized because of the substance that DMCC has, because of the brand, we're positioned. To, to, to overcome this. And once we're out, and the recent announcement by His Highness Sheikh Hamdan bin Mohammed Miraj uh, Maktoum, the Crown Prince of Dubai, talked about by Sunday, we're going to be 50% uh, capacity of workforce. And then I think by sometime in June, it will be 100%. So we're opening up. And, and the, the real fear about the COVID was, when will we open up? If, it, yeah. if it's in a month or two, we did not know that. And the lack of predictability is, is, is really painful and, and scary. Now, I posted uh, recently a, a, pic, a story on, uh, on my Instagram, actually not a story, a post, and I mentioned this uh, discussion I had with uh, Martin Rappaport of uh, Rap Prices, I guess, and RapNet. And it was 2006 or seven, I believe seven, in Carlsbad and GIA campus, right before Isaac, Chris Isaac uh, performed. And he mentioned the story, a funny story, about uh, two rabbis in Africa. Mm -hmm. And they see a lion chasing them. Now, to me, in this story, the lion is, unfortunately, the lion is COVID pandemic. And when I say COVID, the COVID pandemic, I don't talk about just the virus. I worry more about people's reaction, yeah. things like that. You know, I really worry about people more than the disease itself. Yeah. Um, and, and the one rabbi started praying. You know, he's going, the rabbi is going to meet God, so he's yeah. praying. The other one was wearing running shoes and he's tying his laces. <laughs> the rabbi's like, are you mad? You can't outrun the lion. He said, I don't need to. I only have to outrun you to survive. <laughs> and I, I actually, I'm not proud of saying this on live Instagram, but I'm wearing my running shoes and I will yeah. keep running because yeah. it is the survival of the fittest. But you know, uh, Ahmed, Ahmed, I think what you say, mm. it's so honest, you know, and mm. I guess that most people think like that. 
but they are afraid to say that because mm -hmm. we are in times then we are kind of afraid of our judgment, what people will talk about us, what you, what's the right things to say. And the truth is that nobody knows what's going to happen. We mm -hmm. must be optimis optimistic. We must uh, look for new and potential strategies. But the truth is that we cannot see the only the point of the health problem. That, that is, will be a big health problem. It already mm -hmm. is. Our people are dying because of the COVID. But we have to look for the economy, the business, the, the networking, everything. So we cannot, uh, and I understand what you say. I mean, sometimes I, I tell because uh, I gave a few interviews here in Brazil and in, uh, in other places, talk about that. Mm -hmm. and, I, and people after the, the interview say, wow, Ali, thank you very much for saying that because apparently you cannot say about the economy side too. And we have to say, we must say to looking for uh, strategies. Otherwise, people will... We don't know what they have to do, and they will Re get recently. I, recently, I saw Moody's uh, study or review on uh, <clears throat> what what industries in Dubai was impacted by COVID, and I don't know if it was it's just saying that things are very bleak. And this is a few weeks ago. You have to understand when they make these studies, they don't know when the market will open. So these announcements by His Highness Sheikh Hamdan changes the ball game and and brings brings confidence. So. But at that time, I was kind of proud that, you know, they said the airport is impacted, this is impacted. Then they, they put DMCC, DMCC, not, not impact, not directly impacted. You see, the, one of the things that His Highness Sheikh Mohammed Rashid Maktoum uh, focused on, especially on the second uh, part of, uh, I guess, I, if I could say, if I can say a career, is to make sure that Dubai diversifies. If you read his book, My Vision, he looks at the previous crashes, you know, uh, during the Iran war and before when the pearl industry crashed as well. And if you and the, the common denominator was putting all your eggs in one basket. So instead of uh, having just a, a lot of the focus on, on the trade with Iran, he had multiple trade routes. That's not going to change. We're going to make sure the, the Silk Route is still strong. The one, uh, one Road, One Belt initiative, we will support China. Uh, my first phone call to the um, to the ambassador was the ambassador of China, later on UK, and uh, and the, the our ambassador in Germany as well, um, and and recently I, uh, the our ambassador in Colombia. Um, coffee is very important for me, but also the emeralds. I've I've never seen better stones than than the ones I've seen in Colombia, um, but uh, we we we're not going anywhere. The diversity is very important. And the reason that Dubai is surviving is because it has it ha did not put all its eggs in one basket. It, the DMCC up till uh, the COVID, uh, COVID pandemic, and I think probably more so today, is a great contributor to the GDP of the government of Dubai. It's about 10% on our last study. That number could be higher given that DMCC is active and will grow faster. So uh, I'm, I'm very happy with where we are. We will have to be leaner we will be will have to be more flexible and fast so these things will have to happen so unless unless uh, the department or the individual is adding value or is contributing or it makes sense even so if it's a place where it needs a lot of footfall that needs to re be re-looked re at um, and i'm not opposed to having more digital more ai more robots this is the way it is i mean we're not really trying to replicate what we've seen in the movies like back to the future minority minority report for the fun of it this is a necessity today yeah absolutely uh, ahmed uh, you were talking about because we have uh, uh, some people here from venezuela colombia yes. uh, latin community here very strong here um uh, tell us about uh, your experience in Latin America. What, what do you thought about Latin America before visiting for the first time? I guess you visited for the first time was Panama, correct? No, 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 no. As KP chair, yes, Panama. But I think, uh, look, when I was studying in California, I did drive south to Mexico. Oh, so okay. that's different. That does not count. Um, right. I've, I've, gone, I've gone, I think, 2013, I did Colombia and okay. Ecuador. And I didn't want to go, to be honest. It was uh, Why? my friends and because, because it's too I, far. It's too I, far. It's I, not, I think that that's it's not where I was. It's not where I was mentally. We had a lot of work locally to be dealt with. Why in the world would I go in the end of the world? And I didn't speak the language. There yes. were so many. Uh, you know what? I made the mistake at looking at the 
challenges rather than the opportunities before yeah. that. And, and to be honest, it was the, the long flight. I, I hated the long flight, not because of the time it takes me to get there, of the time it takes me to recover when I'm back. So it was, per, it was just inconvenient for me at that time. I've adapted, things have changed since then. But I think I did, 2013 was Colombia and Ecuador. I was impressed with Ecuador. Colombia, I only know what I've seen in movies. So I was a bit afraid, you know, but, uh, but it, 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 it put some seeds in my mind. In 2014, I did Mexico City for the first time. And that's where I met, he was the Consul General, His Excellency Salim Luis. He was the Consul General of Mexico. Then he moved to Barcelona. He opened the door to the likes of Fomenti, the Chamber of Commerce there. Today, he's the ambassador to uh, Colombia. My, his, his, predecessor, his, his successor in uh, Barcelona also moved and became uh, uh, Shamsi, His Excellency uh, Shamsi also moved to Peru. He's the ambassador there. And you bet I'll be in touch with him on cacao, coffee, definitely gold and other opportunities with Peru at superfoods and things like that. Um, I know your interest is more on uh, jewelry. I, <laughs> no, I, I remember. I, 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 I even remember when I saw you in Sao Paulo. I was focusing a lot on coffee, and most yeah. of the events, most yeah. of the discussions was about meat and halal meat. <laughs> and I remember I skipped halal meat for coffee for personal reasons. But Paraguay, Argentina, and Sao Paulo did not want to hear much of anything else except for meat. Um, that was interesting for me. But, but look, today I'm a different person when it comes to that. I mean, I know we'll be doing a lot more uh, conference calls, Zoom meetings and all that, but I will have to visit because I get a feel to things. Um, even today, when you are engaging with the executives and others on Zoom, it's different when you get introduced to someone on the screen rather than someone you've met a few times. There's a bit of more confidence and trust. And this is something really in your core you can't really change so fast. Um, so I, I do think things will come back, but for the airline industry, it's not going to be like a touch of a button. People, yeah. they need critical mass, they need critical demand, and that's not going to happen. You have people that are off the job. I think in the U.S., they've approached 30 million unemployment or more. So it, that will have an impact. You can't ignore it. And I believe I've said this a few times before, keep a close eye on how the schooling will be. Um, not every family can deal with your kids being homeschooled. Some actually already do it before that for other reasons, not really spread of disease, but really to have control of the emotional intelligence of their kids and other reasons. So it depends where you're at, but this will move uh, talent around depending on how the schooling is. The U.S. will have to go through that. They don't listen to what people don't talk about more than what they're talking about. And the schooling, I don't think there, there is enough attention on it. It's not yeah. going to go back the way, the way it is, especially for, for, for the teenagers and below that. For sure, for sure, absolutely. But, uh, well, for those who are watching us, if you want to make questions here for Ahmed, please go ahead. It's, it's your time. Ahmed, uh, why you think, in your opinion, of course, um, why you think then people are so attractive when you, when you talk about Dubai? Because there are, there are other countries in the Middle East, very interesting countries yes. too, I have a chance to, to visit. But uh, why people love Emirates and why people love specifically Dubai? Why, in your opinion, Dubai is so attractive? There's a lot of success stories in Dubai. Um, a lot of uh, businesses that have grown. So if I talk on a small level in DMCC, we have a Google tech hub called Astrolabs. And that's to bring in uh, young entrepreneurs who, uh, who need a little bit of assistance rather than just you know, set up an office and, and put a lot of uh, debts and cost on themselves. And, they, and, and what they focus on more than just apps and tech businesses, they look at challenges in, in the, around the globe, which means there are opportunities. It's a Google tech, uh, Google-backed uh, tech hub. We, are, uh, we, DMCC, we strategically support them, whether it's visa cost, like... Oh, I think he got lens. Let's say I think he lost. We lost Ahmed. Well, we, we were talking about the how Dubai is so attractive because I know that many people. Let's he's already here. Uh, many people always uh, ask me why why have so so special in Dubai, and I mention many many things. But it's nice we hear from Ahmed. Please. Go Here ahead. I am. Uh, where did I leave off? I kept talking to myself for a while before I realized I was disconnected. <laughs> No, we, please, you can, we can start, don't worry.
Yeah, I wanted to, uh, I was talking about Astrolabs, uh, and they've been expanding since then. They Obviously now they, they have a co-sharing uh, office space, and that's, uh, that's a bit of a challenge uh, at the moment, but they know that it's going to be overcome, and offices are, as I mentioned, Sunday 50%, and in June it will be 100%. Uh, we'll see how, how the, re, the new normal looks like. I mean, some say the new normal is abnormal, but, uh, but we're still the fastest uh, growing free zone. We set up businesses. Um, I'm still there. I've been there 19 years. A lot of the, our, our key uh, executives have been there for, for like six to 12 years. So the continuation is there. You asked me, if I recall correctly, you asked me, why is Dubai attractive? Uh, yes, it's attractive to because of its consistency. Um, uh, and, and it's really, whether the rest of the GCC likes it or not, it is the gateway to the Middle East. Um, I'll give you an example. Harley Davidson uh, pushed to set up to have their office in Al-Mastar. My team told them, you have nothing to do with diamonds or commodities. Mm -hmm. They made an argument that they are. They said, in our, in our motorcycles, we have to uh, use uh, rubber, steel, gas, I'm like, okay, fine. I made the so exception because I like... So they convinced you. No, you convinced they, me. They didn't, but I'm like, you know what? <laughs> I can give them a pass. But their office is to serve the agents in the Middle East, North Africa region. And for the, uh, for, for the Asia region, they set up in Singapore. So if, if, if it's too much for me to say that Dubai is the capital of the Minasa region... Well, fine, then Dubai is the Singapore of the Middle East or the Hong Kong of the Middle East. Uh, but it depends who you talk to. Dubai is seen uh, as a shorter flight, uh, Dubai to Mumbai, than Mumbai to Delhi. So mm -hmm. there's a big Indian community, and that's not going anywhere. Um, there's still a lot more to be done. I really enjoyed traveling the past few years. And as KP chair, you know, I didn't just wear my diamonds hat or KP hat. I looked at everything. So in Burkina Faso, the push was to get them to join the KP so that Africa would have more of a voice. But I looked at their coca, uh, coca plant, uh, which is used for Pepsi Cola, etc. Yeah. I, I learned a little bit more. I went to a number of countries. But to, 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 to be able to go to about 13 African countries with the challenges and connections and all that, it conditioned me to take up any business trip anywhere else around the world. Everything else was smoother. Plus, these airlines in Africa actually progressed since 2016. I did go to Venezuela because it was, uh, I know that Venezuela was out of the KP for, for a number of years since Chavez time. And, uh, and I was interested to check out Panama because of my good friend, Eli Ezikov, the former Who president here, of the... Who's here, by the way? Ah, uh, oh, he's on, he's, he's checking. He's here, okay. Eli Ezikov is here with us. <laughs> by the way, when you were mentioning Pato last time, I didn't know he was online. That's why I was changing the subject. I, I didn't want <laughs> my discussion to be about football. Uh, but, but, but I'm grateful to all the introductions that Ellie has made uh, on that trip. I'm still in touch with the former uh, Minister of Commerce, uh, uh, His Excellency Augusto, uh, our, the, our former ambassador of Panama to the UAE, uh, Eduardo uh, Fonseca. Um, I have more contacts. And if you see, actually, I posted today uh, a bit of update on my Zoom uh, yes. meeting with uh, with Wilford. Yeah, so, that's all. So, so there's this, there's a, there's a momentum happening. Colombia, actually, I wasn't going as KP chair, but I was there with the foreign ministry, and the coffee initiative was just plans. But I made sure His Highness Sheikh Abdullah bin Zayed, the foreign ministry, is aware of our plans, and he mentioned that in uh, in their conference or their the press conference. I'm glad that it's a reality. It's happening. It's working today. Venezuela was a risk. I, had, I went there just to see if they really want to join the KP or not, rather mm -hmm. than believe what the NGOs uh, have said about them and all that. They are, they are serious about joining. They have a lot of other issues, but it doesn't mean you cut off and you don't listen. Communication and dialogue is important. Today, you don't see eye to eye. Tomorrow, you would. So people do change. People change for the better or for the worse. You have to stay in touch. So uh, visiting Venezuela at that time also uh, gave, me a bit of, uh, gave me a bit of an eye-opener, and they joined the KP during our chairmanship. The main thing about uh, that year was we had to deal with the rough diamond valuation, and I, I presented a few concepts. We had a few workshops, and the thing that kept coming was uh, rough diamond valuation, or price discovery based on reverse engineering from transacted polished diamonds, which a few companies know how to do. 
uh, it's it's there. If where's there where there's a will, there's a way. Absolutely. Ahmed, um, there is a question here from our, mm. our audience. Uh, hi, Ahmed. As I start up in Dubai, now I want to know how to survive and how to get found during this time. Is the question. Found, found what, though? Uh, Fund, no, funding, funding. Fund, yeah, She fun, means yeah, fund, fun. funding, okay. Uh, it depends on your business. I mean, uh, it depends also on your relationship with the bank. Uh, some banks are more open on uh, more bullish on property, some on services. It depends. It depends who you're talking to and where in Dubai. Um, it also depends on the shareholders. Sometimes a person's name can carry them really far and sometimes too far. Um, if you look at uh, if you look at HSBC, they've they've had their hands burnt a few times, not in Dubai, in Texas. There's actually a TV show about it called in Dirty Business, I think. And the title is too big to jail and it depends who you're working with uh, you have to, you have to do your research and if it's not working look at a different business plan you not every you know not none of the big play uh, the big billionaires had had success i just mentioned that uh, warren buffett apologized about making a mistake on the aviation etc he assumed this industry would not be touched it's a solid business but the pandemic changed that you really need to take a step back, see where things are at. And, and I, I do get annoyed a little bit when I see a lot of businesses that are linked to making masks, this and that. I'm like, that's the first idea. That's the draft idea. You know, refine it a little bit more. Um, it depends. It depends. I think, I, think, I think in all businesses, there needs to be a human touch. It needs to be adding value. You cannot... You, you know, it's not about selling the most. It's not about uh, having the biggest number. Look at Starbucks. It didn't work in Australia. You know, they had to shut down 90% of their coffee shops in Australia. And that's before the pandemic. The coffee was not up to the standard for the Australian taste. And they, they, they have barista competitions. They like boutique coffee shops. They're not there to be treated as commodities. You, if I would give anyone advice on this live Instagram, if you're focusing on a business, make sure the end user does not feel as a commoditized person. Like, we don't like to commoditize diamonds. We don't want to do that. Gold is different. Gold is an investment tool. Gold is a global currency. Gold is what, where people go to. Why did we display the gold coin in Burj Khalifa? It's easier. It's, it's, it's for everyone. Uh, it's easy to, do, to disperse and all that. But coming back to what product, it needs to be more personal than that. It needs Absolutely. to be more personal. Especially when you bring to the jewelry business, then you really have to study the market, which uh, what works in one country might don't work in the other country. So, and, and all our events and conferences, when they talk about how to uh, bring back value for diamonds, the one thing that's screaming in my head, but I, I I've held myself till now, I guess, uh, is that maybe we should stop producing as much, just cut down. I mean, the reason the, the pearl industry holds on to its prices, you know, you're talking about Nick Paspali, true leader, true influencer. I learned a lot from him. He saved us from losing a lot of money on, on, on uh, well, I'm not against pearl farming in the GCC, but if you're talking about a commercially viable business, that wasn't going to work. He saved us from, from, from drowning ourselves in that. Um, he explained to me exactly what the history of the pearling industry was for the GCC. One of the reasons the pearling industry crashed is not just because of the wars. Uh, it was more of similar to the property, I guess. There was an oversupply, overfishing. Yeah. There was a bit of greed. Um, and, and, and what he tells me that him, Robert Wan and Jilna, these, these three represented at least at that time 90% of the high-end pearls. They control, they don't oversupply the pearl industry. They keep it in stock and they supply as and when as needed. If you oversupply more than the demand, it's easy for the price to crash. It's similar with the diamonds. I know it's difficult for, because it moved from Arosa and the beers to more governmental production. They need to look at the bigger picture. You sell it off now, the, you, your site holders will suffer. The, the, the oversupply will affect, will affect the market. So... It doesn't work. Maybe for the big stone and unique stone, yes. But, uh, but we should look at the supply mechanism, especially today. Not everyone is in the mood of buying diamonds. I mean, it's, it's, yeah. people have different priorities. So timing is important. There has been a fallout from the, uh, with the diamond industry and Rappaport, especially in, I think, the first quarter. 
the, the, the matter wasn't about Rappaport putting what the, what the price should be or shouldn't be. It's whether there should have these, these prices should have been displayed or not. I'll give you my view on it. A Rolls Royce is a Rolls Royce, but if the market is not there for it, you take it off the shelf. You don't say I'll sell it cheaper than a, than a bicycle. I that does not make sense. 100% um, the, 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 the oil industry faced a challenge and it had to do more with storage. And CNN and all the news uh, headlines were, oh, look at it, minus 30, minus 40. Who believes oil is minus, below zero? It's not. There is a problem in the system. So, and, and the headlines did not come and say, you know what, it's back to 30, because that's not news. Good news course, doesn't sell. But it's still there, and I believe it will grow. Um, this, is a, uh, this is a short blip. What you see today isn't a, re isn't a reflection of the uh, economy. It's a reflection of governments taking responsibilities, doubly listening to the, uh, to the World Health Organization. So it is what the governments are doing to save lives. You don't confuse that with what the market would be or should be. People yes. will adapt. Absolutely. Somebody, another question here. Uh, how is the gold market now, in your opinion? There's a lot of demand on our gold coins. I'm happy about that. I mean, I'm going to show off a little bit. I took a risk. I, was, I, I had three, four sleepless nights, not just because they're gold coins and all that. They, ha they hold the images of our president and vice president. And I was worried in those three minutes, maybe the electricity might go off or something. And it's not because of Dubai. It's more of my luck. I, I have a special relationship with Murphy's Law. What, what can go wrong will actually go wrong. And thank God that went well. I had in a similar initiative, not really about coins, but we, we, had the, uh, we broke the record in the, with the biggest jigsaw puzzle. And it had an image of His Highness, uh, the late uh, president and ruler of Abu Dhabi, the late president of UAE, Sheikh Zayed. And... The first time we gave it a try, we had crazy winds that blew all the jigsaws around uh, and we couldn't go through it. We had to cancel. We did it after two weeks, done, and, uh, you know, things happen. But on the gold side, yes, I mean, it depends where, you, where you're standing, you know, um, what you need it for. I think the coin market will be growing going forward. Um, and I'm not saying pick UAE gold bullion coin over the Kruger Rand and Golden Panda. I mean... I think the collectors will want to add the UAE gold bullion coin to their collection today. That has an impact. Uh, uh, I, I, I think there's a lot, a lot of confidence in the region, more in, in the gold in Dubai than any other place, because we're very harsh when it comes to the retailers. If, if the retailer presents a jewelry or a gold, gold coin or some gold piece that's not reflective of what they say it is, there's no warning, there's no fine. We shut it down, the person's out of business because our reputation takes precedence than just giving chances. Yes, another question here. Um, by the way, thank you everybody for the questions. We, I will try to, uh, we are trying to answer everything here. Uh, what's, uh, what is DMCC doing with the blockchain? I'm just gonna put my phone on airplane mode because I'm getting a lot of sure, phone calls. Sure. I think my friends and uh, my contacts think that I have a separate phone for Instagram. One sure, go ahead. In the meanwhile, thank you everybody for the questions. I hope you are enjoying. Keep it, sending your okay. question. We are trying to answer everybody here. Can you hear me now, Ahmed? I'm here. I'm back. Right. Do, do I, like, I like the question on, on diamonds. On diamonds, okay. Uh, how do you use the diamond price in wrap up? Uh, wrap up board in the coming months. We, you believe then we will go down? I, I can't make that prediction. If you ask Martin Rappaport, he'll refuse to answer that question. But there are two platforms for prices. So you have Rappaport, but Get Diamonds is in as well. And I would compare. So if you look at the gold and commodities exchange, you have gold prices there, gold futures, currency pairs, uh, the oil futures. And some of our members are members of COMEX and other exchanges. Uh, they use it for, uh, for, uh, for arbitrage and all that. But, but uh, today, there are, two, there are two diamond pricing platforms. The, the veteran, obviously, is Rappaport, and it's not, it's not going to be overtaken anytime soon. But keep, a, uh, keep an open uh, eye and, and, and you, use your own, use your own uh, common sense on where the price is prices would be. Um, I don't have a view on that. It depends what the diamonds are. 
um, there's expectation that a few months people will want to celebrate and all that. Yeah. I don't, I don't want to celebrate with with anyone. I'm not going to make any big decisions after yeah. this. I just I just want to keep my tension down and focus at work. I mean, it depends who you are and where you're at in your life. Exactly. I read other times uh, then China, for instance, in the luxury market, it was uh, they are selling very good in the after they they come back. But that don't mean this is China is a specific market. That don't mean that it will happen in every country. But so we have to be careful about diamond jewelry, everything. Um, people are asking me here. Okay, let's see. Okay. Uh, oh, people are asking me here. Uh, yeah, I'm back. Sorry. To come back to Brazil. <laughs> I, you know. It, it would take me a month or two to explore all of Brazil. And I, I do have a lot of places I want to go to. I've only been to Sao Paulo when I met you uh, last over there. And I've been to Rio for the Pulses Conference. And I wasn't expecting to enjoy Rio like that. I even went to the, uh, to, to the Christ statue, Christ the Redeemer, I guess it's called. Um, I enjoyed it. I think, I don't know. I can't, I can't these are, these are, these are, I, I don't know. I don't know. It depends. It depends. It has to be justified. I think I'll likely do Africa before I go anywhere else. Africa, I, I, I would do. I, I have a few, few things that I want to do in uh, Sierra Leone. There's an initiative with the Diamond Development Initiative. Um, we supported their initiative in Bujimai in Congo, where uh, we, we're assisting the artisanal miners. So it will like, my first priority would be assisting artisanal mining. So if there's some initiative in Brazil where I could assist some farmers or, uh, or specific miners, get them to use less of the mercury, make life better for them, uh, I, would, I would put that high up in my priority at this stage. Very good. Well, everybody, we have more nine minutes here. As you know, Great. Instagram takes only one hour. So I will uh, do, do more two questions to Ahmed and during this time, you guys can send your comments, compliments to Ahmed and everything. Ahmed, uh, one question here. Uh, how about the parallel platform emerging with Rappaport? Does DMCC support any? DMCC, uh, look, my colleague Martin Leek, myself, we're good friends with Martin Rappaport. I'm good friends with Mordi, Izzy. I've known them for over 10 years. Uh, but I enjoy, I enjoy competition a little bit. I enjoy seeing that. Uh, I, I, don't think, I don't think it's a big uh, concern for Rappaport to see Get Diamond, but uh, it's fun to see. It's fun to see this, and uh, it will only be good for the, for the market to have competition. Competition breeds quality. So uh, Get Diamond will learn and, and progress and get better, and the support that Get Diamonds uh, has is not something to be overlooked or underestimated. And again, with, with Rappaport, the history, the know-how, and, and where Martin is today is not the same Martin from the 90s and 80s and the early 2000s. So uh, I, wouldn't, I wouldn't underestimate bo uh, any of them. But it will be interesting where things are, are going to go. Uh, one thing's for sure, Get Diamonds is not some trial. It's not, tempor it's not for a temporary time. It's here to stay for the long run. It's not going anywhere. I know who's supporting it. I'm in those meetings. I enjoy hearing these things. I'm learning a lot. It feels like the diamond industry is reinventing itself all over again. And uh, there's a reason why diamonds are ahead of the color stones. There's a reason why diamonds is the king of all color stones. It's, it's not just the diamond itself. So there's a sto I think, I think uh, a diamond is the strongest stone and you have the, the jade is like the hardest stone or vice versa. I can't remember. I, but... But, but what makes diamonds where they are today is it's, it's the people behind it. They know, they know. They, they even, they didn't allow the movie, for example, Blood Diamonds to go too crazy. They, they got in touch with the producers. I was there when they were talking about a movie with DiCaprio coming up. They're there, they know. And, and, and uh, had they left Hollywood to do what it wants, you would think 40, 30% of diamonds have it. But you wouldn't know that it's about one, 2%. Yet, the message from Eli Ezekoff, he's quoted in saying that, and others is, 1% may, may seem small, but we would want it 0%. So, they, they've, they've set the standard with the Kimberley process, with how they overcame these challenges. It's a role model to the other industries to follow, whether it's base metals, gold metal, uh, gold and precious metals, or color stones. Uh, so, 
it's going to be fun. I'm enjoying this personally. I don't have any any uh, conflict with, uh, or or interest in either platform. Uh, for that, for me, it's just another client that can use the D Dubai Diamond Exchange. Uh, Rappaport does use it for uh, diamond auctions, whether it be polished diamonds or used diamonds. Uh, I, I enjoy seeing this. Uh, it just means more more to the business. Very good. Well, Ahmed, uh, my good friend, I want to thank you for accepting this invitation. This conversation went, was so good, it went so fast, but you know, uh, it was very productive and I'm so happy that you have a chance to share your opinion and vision with everybody here. I really enjoy and I hope you enjoy. So once again, thank you very much for your time. Thank you very much. Thank you. <laughs> well, um, to everybody who have more questions, unfortunately, we don't have more time so we will have to finish here next next Tuesday next time we have another business type that this time with a guest from Mexico uh, Miguel Cotero Ochoa and the conversation will be in Spanish for those who watch us today thank you very very much I appreciate all of you here and see you next Tuesday have a good day stay safe bye bye